Australia Nature. Australia is the only country in the world that is also a continent. Located in the southern hemisphere between the Pacific and Indian Oceans, Australia is one of the largest countries in the world. Despite its vast size, Australia does not have a large population. In the year 2000, there were about 19 million people in Australia. Most Australians live within a short distance of the ocean because much of the interior of Australia is extremely dry. The remote areas of Australia, known as the outback, contain several sandy, rocky deserts. Some parts of the outback receive somewhat more rainfall and can support some grassy vegetation. In these areas, there are many ranches or farms where sheep and cattle are raised. Although the outback of Australia is a harsh place, some parts of it are quite beautiful. In the middle of the Australian continent, a large red rock known as Uluru stands in the desert. It is nearly 350 meters tall and is nearly 10 kilometers around. Tourists come from all over the world to see this huge and beautiful rock in the middle of a flat desert. In contrast to the dry interior areas, the northern coast of Australia receives a great deal of rainfall. This area is covered in thick, lush vegetation with tropical rainforests whose exotic trees and flowers are found nowhere else in the world. Off the northeast coast of the continent, a large coral reef known as the Great Barrier Reef is found. A coral reef is a structure that consists of the bodies of small underwater animals called coral, whose dead bodies create this unusual structure beneath the surface of the water. The reef and the underwater life surrounding it are especially beautiful. Australia was separated from the rest of the world for millions of years. As a result, many of the plant and animal species in Australia are very different from those in other parts of the world. For example, many of the animals in Australia belong to a special category called the marsupials. Marsupials are mammals, but they are a special kind of mammal because they give birth to offspring that are not yet well developed. In many marsupials, the offspring continue to develop after being born inside a pocket or pouch on the mother's body. The most famous marsupial is the kangaroo. Kangaroos can travel at great speeds by hopping on their hind legs and using their large tails for balance. The kangaroo is a rather large animal, with the larger individuals sometimes weighing 90 kilograms. Another famous marsupial is the koala. This animal is sometimes called a koala bear because it looks somewhat like a small bear. The koala lives in the branches of trees called eucalyptus trees. Koalas eat the leaves of eucalyptus trees. Of course, Australia also has people. We will discuss the people of Australia in the next passage. Drug use among athletes. Drug use is a common problem in many sports competitions today. In both professional and amateur sports, many athletes use drugs that are designed to improve athletic performance. The use of these drugs may have harmful effects on the future health of athletes, but they also give an unfair advantage in athletic competitions. Some of the most widely used performance enhancing drugs are called anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids are drugs that are very similar to the male hormone testosterone. These drugs allow athletes to develop larger and stronger muscles and to increase the intensity of training. For sports that require strength, power, or speed, the use of steroids can provide advantages. In past years, many famous sprinters and weightlifters have been found to have used steroids. However, anabolic steroids have many negative side effects. To give just a few examples, steroids can cause changes in mood, including irritability and anger, and can also cause skin problems such as acne. In men, steroid use can lead to reduction in the functioning of the testicles. In women, steroid use can interfere with menstruation. In both men and women, long term side effects include an increased risk of some forms of cancer. Another widely used drug is known as EPO, 
EPO is a hormone that helps to produce red blood cells, which carry oxygen to the muscles. When taken by athletes who compete in sports that require great endurance, EPO may provide an advantage by allowing the athletes to maintain their speed for a longer time and distance. During 1998, there was a scandal at a famous bicycle race, the Tour de France, when it was found that many of these long distance cyclists were using EPO to gain an advantage over their competitors. EPO has side effects. For example, it increases the likelihood of developing blood clots, which increase the risk of a stroke or heart attack. One difficulty in preventing the use of performance enhancing drugs is that it is not always possible to detect the use of the drugs. Tests have been developed to detect the drugs, but new varieties of the drugs are often not detected. Also, athletes who stop using the drugs well before a drug test may avoid being detected. Preventing the use of performance enhancing drugs in athletes is difficult, but it is important. Most athletes want to compete without using artificial substances that provide easy advantages, and they do not want to risk their health by using these substances. If those athletes are to have a fair chance, it is necessary to prevent other athletes from gaining advantages due to the use of these drugs. Life in academia. A person like me, who teaches and conducts research at an academic institution, is called academic. The academic institution may be a form of a university, a college, or another post secondary institution. I have been working in universities for almost 11 years. While enjoying my life in academia, we academics also have a lot of stress and often go through a large amount of stress and frustration. Firstly, we have pressure from the university we are working at to become effective teachers. As the environment, in terms of the society and the marketplace, has become more dynamic and competitive, we as teachers must provide students with necessary skills and knowledge so they can become successful in their society. It requires a lot of preparation, updating of material, self learning, and continuous improvement in teaching. For these reasons, teaching and learning should complement each other. Secondly, we have pressure from both our university and our academic peers to become active and effective researchers. What we teach to our students in class is no doubt closely related to what we have learned or discovered from our research activities. Thirdly, we have pressure from the university and the community to become good corporate citizens through active participation in various university committees and or the community at large. A university and the community it belongs to must work closely together to identify common interests and to conduct projects that could benefit both parties. Even with a high degree of the aforementioned pressures, I love my job as a teacher, scholar, and citizen. There is a high level of freedom and flexibility. Academia is a place to meet new people, to create new ideas, and for everyone in that community to learn. It is a place where both teaching and learning always take place.